Hi, my name is Susan Gallabach, and I am an autistic, retired occupational therapist. And I would like to share this presentation with you on using your sources of motivation that hopefully you've explored in the previous presentation to socially connect with others that live in your world. Friendships are built on what you have in common that you can share with others, as well as what you have that others don't. So consider sharing what you're good at with others uh, can also be a, a way of really connecting with them. Let's look at sharing the motivation scale that I introduced in the previous presentation with someone that you want to socially connect with, someone in your world that you feel you could but don't know how, perhaps, to find that center little bit of shared interest. Every individual has lots of sources of motivation, but they don't always connect with other people. So that's why typical people search to have lots of friends, because with each friend, there's only perhaps a small number area of shared interest that they can enjoy. You wanna be able to compare their findings using the scale that I introduced to you with your findings. And you wanna look for the commonalities in each of the areas of motivation, intrinsic, extrinsic, and personal motivators. What you may see in the way of differences is they may score more sometimes than you did and less, very little or a lot because autistics tend to deal more with the extremes than somewhere in the middle. So either we do or we don't. Only sometimes do we sometimes. Um, common interest may be actually more motivating them than special interests are for you. So you may find those differences. You may score a lot in more intrinsic motivators and less in the extrinsic motivator categories than they do. So you may find some differences between the two, but what you're looking for are those areas that you do share. If your lot responses don't match, you want to try to match your a lot with their sometimes because at least sometimes they do share something that you feel very passionate about. So let's move on and we're going to ask them to use the same motivation scale that you were provided and that you can download and pass on to them. And you want to be able to find some commonalities between what motivates you and someone else in your life. So you want to list here, and I suggest that you not only list, but circle each of the intrinsic motivators to which you both answered a lot. List, but don't circle the intrinsic motivators that you both list, at least as sometimes. I want you to list them because sometimes is still an area that you can connect. It's not as deep an interest but it is a way of connecting with someone else. The same thing with the extrinsic motivators and the personal motivators. Anything in which you match a lot, list and circle. Otherwise, at least look for commonalities among you both listed as at least sometimes. Now, this presentation is going to talk about how you can use the motivators that you share with others to find activities that you can both enjoy. Let's start with intrinsic motivators that you share. Each activity category below, you want to circle the intrinsic sources of motivation that you both identified a lot and then underline those that you at least shared sometimes. For example, activities that satisfy your basic needs. If you both found that self-interest and escape 
and any particular personal source of motivation that you share in common, you share a lot. You want to list, circle those that you share a lot and underline those that you share at least sometimes. Same thing with activities that would provide choice and options. If you have common interests that motivates both of you a lot, then you'll circle it. Circle it. If not, at least sometimes, underline it. If you don't share it at least sometimes together, leave it alone. Don't circle or underline it. But escape, yeah, that may be circled here and here because you both share escape, otherwise avoidance of activities that don't feel good. Um, and again, I'm putting any particular sources of personal motivation and you wanna list those because I can't put them all here. Um, so list any and circle any below that you do share a lot or sometimes. Activities that will provide a challenge or mastery. If you share interest in pleasure-seeking, common interests, activities that provide satisfaction, then these activities will tap into the ones that you share a lot or at least sometimes. Activities that encourage curiosity and exploration. If what you share in common are pleasure-seeking, common interests, and escape, then this activity is a good one for both of you. Stimulating fantasy and imagination. The same thing. If you both enjoy satisfaction, escape, avoiding anything unpleasant, and any particular personal source um, of motivation, then this activity may be very meaningful for you. Providing flow time. If you both seek pleasure for the sake of pleasure, you like the satisfaction of something happening that you want to have happen, and you like avoiding things that are unpleasant. Um, again, circle or underline, if it's a lot or sometimes. If not, just leave it blank. Then you want to go back and look at if all or at least most of the sources of motivation are circled or underlined, you can check the box for that activity. If you didn't circle or underline this, you only circled or underlined this, then I wouldn't check that box because that activity, there's not enough motivators to make that activity meaningful to both of you. So look at which one, at least one maybe activity in which you find that you have um, circled or underlined most, if not all of the areas of motivation listed. Then I will explain the activities and how they can meet those needs that you both share. This is a description. Activities that satisfy the basic needs are activities or at least even an environment that makes each individual feel safe from unexpected um, excesses or unpleasant input. It provides security through predictability or self-control. Examples might be a picnic in a park. It involves food that you both enjoy and an environment that you enjoy or sitting and watching a favorite TV show together. Uh, those are the kind of uh, examples of an activity that would satisfy both of your basic needs and one that you can both feel some social connectedness in sharing with each other. Activities that provide choices and options. These are activities that allow for shared control of what happens, i.e. you each get to make choices or choose from options. There is no right or wrong choice. There may be better or worse ones to achieve any goal that you have in mind. 
But some examples might be what music you choose to play, choose to play, or a particular game that you play, or the snack that you fix. You get to have choices. Um, and, and that's it's the activity is simply that you each get shared control over what you decide to do together. All right, an activity that would provide a challenge or mastery. These are activities that have a goal, preferably one that you choose, and enough cues or self-correcting enough so that you don't fail at it. They're going to guide each individual through trial and error to reach that goal. So repetition of the correct response will lead to a decrease in errors and eventual mastery. Examples, doing a crossword puzzle together or following directions to build a birdhouse, i.e. it has a, an end goal and you, you've got instructions or you can actually look at an answer to get a clue to help you when you're stuck. But you, through trial and error, you, you reach that goal together. That's an activity that you can both share and feel connected in doing. All right, activities that encourage curiosity, exploration. This is either a guided or unguided activity. I, you can have someone teaching it or you simply do it yourself and you figure out for yourself. But it encourages each of you to explore the materials or how you interact with those materials to make discoveries that once you've discovered something, you can do it again i.e. you remember how you did it, you can do it again. Um, it may be watching or discussing a video on space or any other topic, um, and then actually using the same materials to see if you can come up with the same results. Activities that simulate fantasy or imagination can bring people together. This again could be a guided, you have an instructor, or unguided activity that encourages each of you to use materials in a non-usual way to create something that's different, i.e. not traditional, not real, i.e. using art materials to create unique greeting cards or pick a variety of food items to create a unique snack of some kind or sandwich. Um, but you're putting it together in a non-traditional way. It's stimulating both of you, your imagination. Then there's activities that provide flow time, i.e. there's no time limit. You can start, stop when you want, or if you need to stop, you can pick it back up again right where you left off. It's a guided activity that doesn't have a specific time in which it needs to get done. It can continue until it's done or easily left and pick back up at other times, i.e. maybe a card or a board game. You just leave it the way it is and you come back to it or a puzzle. Um, certain leisure activities, dancing, exercises that you do together, taking a walk together. That provides flow time. Doesn't matter how long it is or how short it is, but you can always do it again another time and just pick up where you left off. If that activity appeals to the both of you, this is a wonderful opportunity to socially connect. Let's look at some activities that foster extrinsic sources of motivation. And again, each category below, you're going to circle the sources of motivation that match what you both feel a lot motivated by and underline the sources that you least share, at least share it sometimes. And again, don't circle or underline those that you don't share. For example, activities that involve projects based on your strengths. If you both agree, satisfaction is important very important to you, circle it. If independence is sometimes, you might underline it. But if curiosity, neither one of you really puts it, or one says sometimes, and the other says a little, just leave it blank. And again, personal sources of motivation 
if the ones that you agree on a lot, or at least sometimes, put it there. Okay, activities that involve people and potential friends. Here's where if you're both made of, motivated by common interests, i.e. what other people are doing or saying, sociability, and the sense of, or need to belong, then in any particular personal source of motivation you agree on, then this would be an activity that would bring you together to feel a sense of social motive connectedness. Activities that are likely to earn you praise or recognition. If what motivates both of you a lot, or at least sometimes, are attention, the need for acknowledgement, belonging, and any other particular personal source of motivation, then this would be the activity that would bring you together and you would check. How about activities that involve prizes or rewards? If you're both interested in attention, the need for control, to have what you do acknowledged by other people and belonging, really this one is very much like this one, except that you have more control in this one because it involves prizes and rewards. Activities that are likely to elevate your prestige when you succeed might be a source of social connectedness with someone who also desires independence, enjoys attention, wants recognition of themselves from uh, for others, and seeks control. Whereas activities that provide power through leadership are something you connect can connect with other people if you both seek satisfaction, independence, recognition of self, and control. Again, if all or most of the sources of motivation are circled or underlined, you can check the box for that activity as this is the activity that is most likely to bring you two together. Let's describe some of these activities. An activity that involves a, a project based on your strengths involves methods for achieving that success in the activity are based on or involve the sensory input that each individual enjoys and the motor skill each one does well, i.e. your strengths. They may be, for example, cooking projects, um, sports, dancing, any activity that um, utilizes the strengths that you both share. Activities that involve people and potential friends. These activities include at least one other person that each individual likes or a person who is very kind, patient, and respectful of each of your differences um, doing things like um, games, lectures, watching sports, eating together, as long as it involves friends or potential friends. So the two of you may seek out a third person to join you in something that you both enjoy doing. Activities that are likely to earn you praise or recognition. This activity is set up so that if each individual puts forth persistent effort or achieves greater success than the previous effort, i.e. is you're showing improvement, meeting this target will result in praise or recognition of that effort. People will acknowledge, oh, you're really getting better at that. I like how you did that. Um, so learning a new skill together. Learn to play pickleball or tennis or um, swimming. Finding a solution to a problem might be something that you work on together that others are likely to recognize what you've accomplished and are likely to give you praise and recognition. That will feed, feed the need that you both express is motivating to you. How about an activity that involves prizes or rewards? A 
target level of achievement is set, i.e. you decide what needs to accomplish in order to deserve a reward, and based on each of your current abilities, which, if met, will result in something tangible that the individual values. And again, you can adjust this. If their skills are much higher than yours, then they may have to have a higher criteria to achieve a reward or prize versus you. So, but you're going to set what your goal is and what needs to, to deserve that reward. Um, it could be a simple game or a contest based on your skill level or your age category, i.e. adjusted um, to each of you. And when you both ex uh, achieve that goal, you each get a prize or reward. How about an activity that's likely to elevate your prestige with success for both of you? When criteria is set in advance that points out what each individual needs to do to achieve the next level on this activity, i.e., you've already achieved this. Here's what you need to do to achieve the next step or level um, in an activity. And when that level is achieved, the achievement will be posted for all to see, i.e. it goes up on the bulletin board or it gets posted in the um, uh, local newspaper. Um, but steps needed to achieve a personal goal such as like weight loss or getting a black belt in karate, anything that you're set out to achieve that has steps that indicate progress that you can achieve. That, if it meets your needs, because that's what you want, is some recognition and prestige that goes with achieving something that you're striving to do. This would be a good activity to do with someone else who feels similar to you. How about an activity that provides power through leadership? If each individual is assigned a specific role based on their strength, that they can contribute to a group activity and success in that role is recognized. I.e., your friend may be a really good at playing basketball and that's not your thing, but you are super good at keeping the statistics for the individuals that play or you're the scorekeeper, the referee, or the coach in a sport game, or you might even be the banker in a Monopoly game because you don't do as well in the Monopoly, but you do as, as a keeping track of the banker. That's going to provide you as recognition as a leader in what you do do. And that provides with a sense of power because no one else seems to be able to do exactly what you can do. But you're sharing because your partner has also found a niche, a particular area that they excel in, that they feel they have power through leadership. They can lead other people. I hope all this makes sense. Again, I am here uh, representing Making Sense of Autism, which has been my passion all my life, is understanding and respecting the neurological differences that autistics have and how we can use those differences to, to thrive in our world and develop the social connectedness that we do desire with others in our environment. Thank you for listening, and I hope you've enjoyed this presentation.